On April 20, 2011, while on assignment in Libya, war photographers Chris Hondros and Tim Hetherington were killed by a Libyan military mortar attack. While the world lost two great war photographers, filmmaker Greg Campbell lost a lifetime friend. In his new documentary, Hondros, Campbell has not only created a tribute to his friend, but an in-depth look at the legacy of conflict photography. NewsHour Weekend's Christopher Booker has more. It's the calmness of his voice that's perhaps the most striking. Hello, Chris. Hello, Chris. As young men fire AK-47s in the streets of Monrovia, Liberia, with the steadiest of nerve, 33-year-old Chris Hondros is able to politely tell the caller, now is not a good time to talk. Things are fine. Things are fine. Uh, let, me, let me, give me a call back in about half an hour. As soon as I heard it, I knew we were going to open the film with that because it's, it was just so representative of who he was, how cool and collected he was in these extremely turbulent environments. Chris Hondros would spend a great deal of time photographing the final moments of Liberia's civil war in 2003. One of the final battles was fought on this bridge where he would take one of his most famous photographs. Something clicked in me at that moment when I was thinking about it and just as they were about to charge. You know, I kind of realized at that moment that my whole career as a photographer in a way had been leading up to a moment like that and that the picture was on the bridge. It wasn't 50 feet away from the middle of the bridge. It was on the bridge. There was no shortcut to that. This image of a Liberian commander would land in newspapers and magazines across the globe and Chris Hondros would establish himself as one of the world's preeminent conflict photographers. That one particularly famous image of the government commander jumping for joy after having scored a direct hit with a rocket-propelled grenade is the one that really sort of propelled him to, to the top. For the next eight years, Hondros and his camera offered a window to some of recent history's darkest moments in places like Afghanistan, Iraq, Egypt, and Libya. He would be nominated for the Pulitzer Prize twice. But the documentary Hondros is not just a retrospective of his work. It's a portrait of a friendship that began in high school in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Hondros and director Greg Campbell's love of journalism started together during their freshman year. Hondros as a photographer, Campbell as a writer. With journalism, we found sort of a real easy route to go see history as it was being made. My first trip was to Bosnia during the reunification of Sarajevo in 1996, and Chris picked me up from the airport when I came back, and his immediate question was, how did you do it? What were the steps? Uh, what hotel did you stay in? How did you figure out a car? He wanted to do this work. He believed in it with all of his heart. He was pretty clear-eyed about what it meant. What Campbell's film follows is not only the breadth of this work, but a connection between all the photographs that Hondros took. Looking from the very beginning, from when he first started photographing conflicts in Kosovo, all the way up to the very end, Chris had a particular framing theme that he that is evident in his entire body of work. It was always a little child, a, a, either a boy or girl, who was in sharp relief against uh, sort of an anonymous military figure in the foreground. And of course you see that culminated in the series of images from Talifar. On January 18th, 2005, while embedded with American forces in Talifar, Iraq, Hondros would document an event that has come to help define the aftermath of the American invasion. I hear children's voices inside the car and I knew it was a family. Back doors open and just kids just tumble out of the car, just one after one after one, there were six in all. And the parents sitting in the front were just riddled with bullets and killed instantly. The Hassan family car had approached an American patrol. The soldiers opened fire as the car drove toward them. The mother and the father killed in front of their children. The bullet that hit 11-year-old Rakan pierced his spine. The photograph Hondros took of his sister, 5-year-old Samar Hassan, covered in her parents' blood, would be published across the world. Of course, as a human being, you want to drop all of your equipment and go run and, and, and comfort the people that you're seeing who are suffering so badly. Um, but Chris knew that his role was to, was to publicize the events that he was seeing. The photos Hondros took caused a public outcry. After they were published, the Army removed him from his embed assignment. Rakan was flown to Boston for treatment. Eventually, he learned to walk again. But in 2008, after returning to Iraq, Rakan was killed by an insurgent bombing. I can't say there were a lot of happy endings with some of the subjects of the photographs. You know, I think that was important for us to try to convey in the film because I think Chris knew very well that there were also not a lot of happy endings after he 
snapped the shutter on his camera. And I've heard him say several times that as much as journalists and photographers are recording history, it's maybe more accurate to just say that they're recording a very narrow slice of history. And they're usually some of the most traumatic events of a person's life. And I think Chris really wanted to follow up with stories to try to present a, a wider picture of what, what occurred. In 2011, Campbell received a call from Hondros asking if he would like to join him on a reporting trip to Libya. In the past, he had mostly refused. But in a fateful decision, this time he opted to join him. We were in our hotel room in Benghazi, and he said the photojournalism industry was overdue for a tragedy, that it had been a long time that they'd gone without suffering a loss or a death. And that was true at that point. Um, the international photojournalism community had been extra extraordinarily lucky. And then maybe a week and a half later, Chris and Tim were killed one after another. Who do you think is the audience for this film? Well, I hope it's a, a wide audience. I think anybody, especially with the debate that we're having today about the validity of our profession. The thing that I really hope sort of resonates is that there's still responsible journalists and men and women who are putting their lives on the line to convey what is actually happening and that those images can and should inform a conversation that should lead to discussions about policy. This is sort of what Chris believed. Hondros is now playing in select theaters in New York, Los Angeles, and London.